Welcome to Ag Shorts. Today's topic, how to care for and minimize your impact on pastures. We always take great pride in making sure that we don't overgraze or overconsume on our land or the land in which we lease. But it's gotten more and more difficult the last two years with the drought. So how do you do that? How do you care for it? How do you minimize impact? Sell cows. Short answer, you know. That has been the story for us, yeah. Yeah, or, or try to find more grazing. And, and actually right now, you know, the last two years, our ground, I, it it looks hard. It looks tough. It does. And you look around, and I was I was kind of lamenting that to the guy bringing us hay. And he says, Jesus, Brandon, look around. Everybody's in the same. Don't look at just your place. Everybody's in the same boat. Yeah. Uh, everybody's ground is is looking really hard right now because of uh, low moisture and, and grasshoppers, and you got to eat something. So consequently, you know, our lease ground looks better than our, than our, our deeded ground, because, you know, I don't want to violate the terms of lease and, and, and sometimes, you know, you just take care of other people's stuff better than your own. And I follow the terms of it. And when it gets, if it, if it looks like it's going to get thin, like a few years ago, I pulled those cows out a couple of weeks early, you know, I mean, it's the right thing to do. So you, you, you don't want to lose that relationship with somebody. So consequently your own stuff tends to suffer and you've got to feed it until you can get it to market. And, you know, you got to count a calf that's uh, a month away from really, you know, not taking a huge loss. You try to hold them. And that's when extra expense comes in where now you got to feed a little early. And, and that's what we've done, been doing the last couple of years, which eats us up in, uh, you know, any kind of profit if there was. But you just try to minimize the loss. So it's, it's selling some cows. And that's what we've had to do the last couple of years is sell a few off. Um, especially the ones that, you know, were cull cows anyway. And, you know, you cull a little deeper than what you really normally would do in, just to, to be able to maintain that. Uh, selling horses at a younger age, untrained, is an option. And we've done that as well. Uh, had those available. You normally don't sell our horses until we've had some training on them. But, you know what, kind of necessitates that. And you may or may not breed some back and just hold what you got which, you know, that's not a way to stay in business. You're just, you're just maintaining. So you gotta, you gotta adjust to what you've got and, uh, picking up more lease ground sometimes isn't the option because it's more overhead, more money out. You know, you might as well buy some hay and, uh, feed them on the ground you got and, and impact that ground a little more, which I don't like doing. It's, it's a tough spot to be in and we're not the only ones in it. There's a lot of people in the same boat right now. So that's why you, do little rain dances and you pray for it and hope that it comes and never complain about it. Mud is a good thing. Uh, about a minute and a half left. Is there any way in which you have used land rotation or pasture rotation to maximize your land without just using what you're saying of going to the lease and then coming back early? Yeah. Uh, especially in the winter time, you know, the, the ground, the grass is dormant, but still you you can tear it up, you know, with just animals, being concentrated in it and you try to do that with your when you feed anyway but i will tend to open up you know when it gets like this all of the all of the pastures that are adjoining so that those cattle can move and roam a little bit more and then feed in different spots to to kind of draw them to those areas where when they're done feeding if they want to eat they can graze in that area and put less concentration of them in a in a certain spot um it's not always feasible to do that uh, if you got a lot of snow drifts and stuff out in an area and can't get to it, you can't do that. But at the same time, then you've got a lot of snow and ice on top of that, and you're not impacting it quite as hard, but you, you still are. So it's about spreading that use out as much as you can. Well, that's uh, ways we go about minimizing impact to the land.